Well, good evening, everyone. How are you all doing today? I have not been privileged to be here for such a long time, but I'm really happy to be back. Thank you, TRC, for praying for us and our family, for consistently supporting us. Thank you, children, for all the beautiful drama, Aiden and Alex and Michaela, Emmanuel and, and, and Josiah. You children have made us so happy. We also want to say thank you very much to Nehemiah and Zach Zachariah, Tishel, Dana and Brandon Lutchman for the beautiful words of encouragement and prayer. You lifted Pastor and my heart so much that it brought me to tears to see how you children are growing up and growing up in the Lord and being able to minister to us. We are truly blessed by all the treasures God has given us in Triumphant Revival Center. May God richly bless you all. A special hello tonight to mom. I am missing you. A special hello tonight to Sister Antonia and your whole clan. Thank you all very much for your continued support and prayer. And all of TRC, we love you. We miss you. We are praying that we can, you know, meet together and congregate together and just be in the house of God together um, one more time. May God continue to richly bless you all. This evening, I want to minister on a word and um, I want to call it the lost coin. The lost coin. And I want to talk to you tonight and I want to um, go into the word immediately. And it's taken from Luke chapter 15 verses 8 to 10. Luke chapter 15 verses 8 to 10. Either what woman having 10 pieces of silver, if she lose one piece, doth not light a candle and sweep the house and seek diligently till she find it. And when she had found it, and call it her friends, and her neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which I had lost. Likewise I say unto you, There is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. I read from the King James Version, and the word of the Lord is blessed. I want to ask you something today. You know, how many of you have lost something or someone in your life? One of the most difficult things is to lost someone or lose, sorry, someone or something in your life. And many of us would have experienced in this pandemic that we are in that we have lost more than ever. Some have lost jobs. Some have lost um, their relationships, some have lost their marriages, some have lost their health, some have lost family members. Just today, we got news that one of our family members died, 42 years old, and she passed away today. Condolences to the family, to Auntie Kalauti and Uncle Bala and, and the rest of the clan, Shivanan and Devanan. But we were so heartbroken today to get this news. It is a terrible thing to suffer loss. It is a terrible thing to suffer loss. And we see here in this scripture, this woman, the word of God says, it is a parable, of course, and it says that she, she lost a piece of silver. And when she lost the piece of silver, it really broke her and it tore her apart. And it brought her to a place where she decided that she needed to find this piece of silver. Now, you know, I can, I can, you know, draw the word of God says that she lost it. And it infers because she began to sweep that she lost it in the dust. That for some reason, this piece of silver got lost in the ground, in the earth, in the dust, in the, in the rubbish and whatever it was, it got lost. So she began to sweep to figure out if she could find this piece of silver. It brings me to, you know, just think that all of us at some point in time when we were born, um, we were born into sin. We were born fallen. We were born dishonored. We, you know, we, we were born from the seed of Adam. So obviously we were born into sin. And just as this coin was lost, I believe that we were born lost. And this coin, just as it got, you know, it got lost amongst dust or, or dirt or rubbish or whatever there was. I believe that many times in our lives, for those who do not know Christ and even for those 
who have come to know him. Uh, many times in our life, we feel that we get lost in the chaos of this world, uh, in, in all the issues and the struggles uh, that we go through. Uh, some of us, because of the families we are born into, uh, we go through generation curses and background hurts and rejection and pain uh, and destruction in our life and abuse. Uh, we go through so many things in our life that we become lost in all the rubbish, all the rubble, all the chaos, all the hurt, we become lost. And just like this coin was lost, I believe that there are many who are listening to me today. You are lost. You are broken. You are in despair. You are in a place where you are completely lost. And this is what happened to this coin today. And you know, you look at this woman, it, 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 the, the coin itself became hidden and concealed in rubbish. And how many of us today are out there and you are hearing me today uh, and you have become lost and hidden uh, in all the issues and all the pain, uh, in all the rubble, in all the stress, in all the hurt, uh, in all the confusion fusion and all the chaos and all the uproar, not only because of COVID, but so many things are happening, maybe because of COVID, but also because this world is so full of evil and so full of sin and so full of hurt and so full of pain and death and destruction and rejection and despair that we can become hidden and concealed away in all that's going on in the world today and in our lives. And, and some of you may, may lose, you, you know, a coin can be lost in the carpet, it can be lost in the floor, it can be lost in the, in the dirt, but regardless of where you lose it, it remains lost. Now men may be educated or uneducated. They may come from a good home or they could come from an evil home. They can call themselves religious or they may not be religious. But at the end of the day, if we do not have Christ in our lives, all of us are equally lost. And because this coin, it didn't matter if this coin was new or old. It didn't matter if, if, if this, whatever this coin was, the point of it was that this coin was lost. The word of God says in Romans, Romans 3 verse 23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We are on an equal footing if we do not have Christ. In our life, we are equally lost. All who do not know Christ are equally lost. Some people feel that if they are educated, some people feel that if they have wealth, some people feel that if they have a good job or a good house, or, or maybe if they have their network around a certain circle that, that seems to be elite or have good standing in society, that we are okay. But if we do not have Christ in our life, just as this coin was lost, we are totally lost. The coin also, another point I observe about this parable is that the coin was all together ignorant of being lost. The coin was unaware that it was lost. The owner of the coin was aware that the coin was lost. But the coin itself was unaware that it was lost. Hear what the book of Proverbs chapter 4 verse 19 says, King James Version. The way of the wicked is as darkness. They know not at what they stumble. Hear, hear what Proverbs is saying. That we do not even know when we are lost that we are lost. And we do not even know that we are in darkness. So we do not even know that we are coming across something that's going to cause us to stumble. How many of us are in this place in our life where we are in darkness, where we are lost, but yet we do not know that we are lost because we are so blinded. We are blinded by maybe what we grew up believing. We are blinded by a false sense of security. We are blinded by, by false hope. We are blinded by what we think is right. The word of God says that there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the ends thereof are the way of data. So here I'm telling you, I'm observing that the coin is ignorant. It is oblivious. The coin has no knowledge that it is lost. And let me speak to you out there today. 
Maybe you do not know that you are lost. You are thinking that everything is going okay. I am fine. I, everything is fine with me. I have a, a good marriage. I have a good job. I, I have a good home to go to. I, I have a good car that I drive and all that. But without Christ, if you do not know Jesus Christ as your personal savior, you are lost and you do not even know it. Another thing I noticed about this parable is that the coin retained the image of the emperor or king. And you all would have heard the scripture already when Jesus told them, give unto Caesar what is due unto Caesar, because on the monetary value of that particular time that he was speaking of, Caesar's image would be on the coin. And so on that coin would have the image of whether a king or an emperor, depending on, on who was ruling at what time and where. So the image of who was ruling was on that coin and whether that coin was lost or whether that coin was not lost the image was retained on the coin the coin retained the image of the ruler of the king or at that time and I want to tell you something today maybe you have fallen maybe you have never come to know Christ maybe you did and you are backslidden maybe you are in a dark place right now maybe you are in despair maybe you are in depression maybe you are in a time of your life where you feel that God is so far away I want to let you know that the image of God which was implanted even before you were in your mother's womb the breath of God and the image of God is still retained in you regardless of whether you are lost or not regardless of whether you feel God is near or not God's image is still retained in you just as the image of the emperor or the king was retained in this coin God's image the breath that God put into man when he breathed life into him is still retained in you regardless of where you are it's still retained in you also the coin was lost but it was still claimed the coin was lost but it was still claimed it was not as if the coin was lost and the owner just forgot about the coin no the coin was still claimed observe what the woman called the money she said my peace which was lost, my piece of silver, in other words, which was lost. When she lost its possession, she did not lose her right to it. It did not become somebody else's when it slipped out of her hand. I want to tell you something. Maybe you have slipped out of the hand of God. Or maybe you have never found yourself in the hand of God. I want to tell you something that you still belong to God. He still wants you. He will still pursue after you. He will still, still claim you. The book of Timothy, it says uh, that God puts a seal and a mark uh, on those who belong to him. Uh, so this woman had the right uh, to still claim this coin, to still claim this piece, uh, to still call it my piece, uh, even though it was lost uh, because she still had possession of it even though it was lost. So nobody else could claim possession of the coin, even though it had slipped out of her hand. And the devil may come in all forms to make you feel that God doesn't want you to be his child, that God is not near you, that God has rejected you, that God has forsaken you, that God has forgotten you. I want to tell you something. You are still the image of God. You still belong to God. He still claims you as his own. He still claims you. The devil has no right over your life. It doesn't matter what he brings up. It doesn't matter what he brings your way. It doesn't matter what he fool wants to fool you into thinking. But we are not the children of darkness. We are the children of light. And whether you are in a good place or whether you are in a bad place, God still claims ownership of your soul today. He still loves you. You will still belong to him the elect of God belong to Christ before time began out of God's sovereign and electing love he will bring us to salvation hear what John 6 37 said all that this is Jesus speaking all that the father giveth me shall come to me and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out what does that tell us 
There is a God waiting for us to return to him. There is a God waiting and not only waiting, but pursuing us. Hear what Jesus said. He says that anyone who comes to him, he will not cast them away. Anyone who comes to him, uh, tell him I'm sorry for what I've done. Please forgive me. Oh, oh God, I don't know where to turn. I don't know what to do. I cannot do this thing on my own. He will not cast you out. Another thing I notice about the coin is that it was valued. The coin was valued. The one piece of money to the woman was a tenth part of all she had, and it was very valuable in her esteem. I have found from my observation that life seems to have no value in the world that we live in today. How can you come to that conclusion, Pastor Sue? Well, when I look at how human life is treated, I have come to the conclusion that there is no value on human life. I look at the crimes that are committed. I look at all the murders that are committed. I look at human trafficking. I look at, at, at homosexuality, at lesbianism, at all the things that is happening in the world today. I look at, at pedophilia. I am looking, I'm reading recently that there's something that some countries or, or, or one country wants to bring out and that's called age fluidity and listen to me this world has come to be a dark place it has come to be a dark place. So let me just put this in. I am not preaching about this today. My next message will be on it. But let me put this in today. Many of us want COVID to go away. And many of us want the problems to go away. And the issues to go away. But many of us are not truly praying. And going down our knees. And seeking God for the sins of this world. For those who are caught up in darkness and in sin. And who men who love darkness rather than light. To go down on our knees and prostrate ourselves before God and cry out for the nations of this world, for people who are sick in their mind and sick in their soul and doing so many evil deeds. Let me tell you something. God cannot but judge the kinds of sin that's in the world today. And if God does not judge, and there's coming a time for that, if God does not judge, he will have to apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah because the wickedness of this world is like a flare and a snare in to the very nostrils of the almighty God. So I'm reading about this thing called age fluidity, pedophilia. There are many who, who want to say, well, we, we, they want to bring a law that there can be something called age fluidity is legal. So a big hardback man, 40 years old, 35 years old, could presume and say, I want to be an eight-year-old today so I can have sex with an eight-year-old boy or an eight-year-old girl and, and everything will be legal and right about that. Let me tell you something, that's an abomination, that's sin. I don't care if the very popular or the highest offices of this land or any land is, is agreeing to something like that. I want to tell you something. That's abominations unto God. It is sin. So I am saying there is no value. Like it would seem that there is no value to life anymore. The corruptness of the hearts of men. Imagine a big man want to have sex with an eight-year-old and a seven-year-old and a six-year-old boy. The sickness of the mind, the corruptness of the heart. And so there is no value put on human life. There is no value put on children's life. Here we see that the coin had a value put it. And I want to tell you something. The Lord of love, to the Lord of love, a lost soul is very precious and valuable to him. You are very valuable to the Lord God Almighty. Your life is valuable. Your soul is valuable. How do I know that? Because he sent his only begotten son to die for your sins, uh, that you could stand guiltless uh, while Jesus bear our guilt uh, and our say, sin uh, and our shame while he bore everything on him uh, so that I can stand blameless uh, and guiltless and spotless uh, before a God who who can let me into his kingdom because I am blameless because of what Jesus did. We are to value the souls of men. 
regardless of their creed, regardless of their race, regardless of their background or their age. We are supposed, especially the, 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 the body of Christ is supposed to be doing that. The woman valued the coin. So I'm asking and saying to the church today, the body of Christ, let's typify the body, the church as this woman today who lost this coin. And let's begin to value the souls of men like she valued this coin that was lost. I notice also the piece of money was lost, but it was not lost hopelessly. Why was it not lost hopelessly? Hope Hopelessly, because the woman, she had hopes of recovering. She had hopes of recovering. That is why God continues to pursue you and me, because he has hopes of recovering. Friend, brother, sister, whoever you are today, let me tell you something. You have not gone so far that God does not want to recover you. That God does not want uh, to, to bring redemption to your life. That God does not want to bring you to a place uh, where you can abide with him. Uh, he wants to recover you. The coin was lost, uh, but there was still hope. And we live in a time where it would seem that hope is gone. There are so many out there today have no hope. They have no hope. They feel all is lost. They feel there is nothing better coming. They feel that their, their marriages have ended, that their children have gone far from them. They have lost their jobs. They have no finances. The doctor has just told them, you have a terminal disease. And, and they just feel that they have gone into despair and they have gone into depression and there is no hope. This coin, although it was lost, it was not lost hopelessly. I want to tell you something. You may be in a dark place. You may be in a place where you don't know how you're going to come out of it but I want to tell you something the situation is not hopeless because just as this woman had hopes to recover the coin there is a God who has hopes to recover you hear what Paul told the church at Colossae he said be not moved away from the hope of the gospel which you have heard and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven. Colossians 1 verse 23. He says, do not move away from that hope. Let me tell you all something, people. Do not have hope in the government, you know. Do not put your hope in man, you know. Do not put your hope in yourself. Do not put your hope in your job. Do not put your hope in your body and feel that you will always be young and healthy and everything is going to be all right. Put your hope. Put your confidence, put your trust in the almighty God. He is the only one who can come through to the end. He is the only one who is true at his word. He is the only one who has proven himself today. So man is lost like this coin was. Man is sought just like this coin was. And it was sought by its owner personally. Notice this. Notice she who lost the coin. What did she do? First, she lit a candle, then she swept the house, and then she searched diligently till she found it. This seeking became a matter of very important concern with that woman. She put everything aside to seek out the lost coin. So with the God we serve, he pursues, he seeks. The God we serve never gives up on us. Never give up. This woman, she put aside her household chores. She put aside everything that she could have been doing at this time. Because to her, although she had the other nine coins, to her, this one coin was so important to her that she put aside everything that she had to do to be in pursuit, to go in search, to sweep the lighter candle, to sweep the house and to search diligently. She put the light on. She began to sweep and clean out the place and she began to search diligently. She began to make action. She began to get action going. She began to say, listen, 
That coin is lost. And if I have hope of recovering it, I can't just sit there. I must go after it, just like the God we serve who comes after us. I don't know your situation today, your personal situation. I do not know where you are or what you're facing today. I don't know how many of you are locked away in your homes in despair. How many of you are going through so many hurts in your life? How many of you are crying yourself to sleep? How many of you, your mind cannot rest? You are troubled in your spirit. How many of you are, are getting demonic? attacks and you are being oppressed and suppressed and possessed how many of you out there generation curses and demonic spirits are raging war against you I want to let you know there is a God whose name is Jesus Christ and he is pursuing you he is seeking you he is coming after you and I want to tell you something there is no devil in hell that can match up to the Lord God Almighty so you can come out of your despair this evening you can arise out of your hopelessness because although the situation may seem hopeless, there is hope in a God who is real and true. He created the universes. He flung the stars into existence. He breathed life into you and me and therefore he who started a good work, he is well able to finish it. It doesn't matter where the devil wants you to feel you are. I want to let you know that God is real, that God is in control and he is pursuing you uh, and I want to ask you right now uh, if you can come out of that hopelessness take a minute and just say God uh, God uh, I know you are pursuing me take full control of my life today I cannot do it I am weak I am hopeless I am helpless take control of me today God Luke chapter 19 verse 10 says for the son of man is come to seek and to save that which was lost the word of God says, scarcely for a righteous man would Christ come to lay down his life, but he has come to seek those who were lost. Are you lost today? Are you hurt today? Are you rejected today? Are you in pain today? Are you in despair? I want to tell you something. Christ came for you today. He is seeking you out today. He is pursuing you today. The woman used the most fit and proper means to accomplish her work. She first lit a candle. Now, in that time, there were hardly any windows in the houses. So you had to light a candle to find a coin. Without the candle, no coin would be found. I want to tell you something today, especially the body of Christ I'm speaking to. Without the Holy Spirit, souls cannot be saved. We need to allow the Holy Spirit to light up for us uh, the souls of men who need pursuing and caring for and praying for and sorting out. Uh, hear what the book of John chapter 16 verses 8 to 9 says. And when he, that is the Holy Spirit, uh, is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment of sin because they believe not on me. It is only the Holy Spirit who could reprove the world of sin. We cannot do this work of reaching the dying souls without having the Holy Spirit present. The woman sought for her piece of silver continuously till she found it. So God is not only pursuing us. God is not only giving us hope in a hopeless situation. But here we see just like this woman she searched continuously until she found it. She did not give up. And some of you may be feeling that maybe others around you have given up on you. Maybe you have given up on yourself. But I want to tell you something. Just as this woman searched continuously for that piece of silver, for that coin until she found it, God will pursue you until he finds you. God will pursue you until you respond to him and say, Lord, please forgive me. Lord, here I am. Lord, take full control. I am nothing without you, God. Without you, Christ, I can be nothing. I believe that losing that piece of silver must have discouraged that woman and brought her to a place where, you know, she was in despair and maybe she wanted to quit. But I want to tell you something. She did not quit. Hear what the book of Galatians chapter 6 verse 9 says. And let us not be weary in well-doing. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. 
Hear what 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58 says. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Body of Christ, there are people around you hurting. There are souls that, that are dying. There are men who are crying. Be steadfast. Be unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Know that your labor is not in vain. Do not go weary in well-doing. There's somebody, maybe a neighbor, maybe a friend, maybe a family member, maybe somebody you work with, maybe somebody you travel in a taxi with, maybe somebody you meet in the supermarket or in the shop that you go to. I do not know, but do not get weary in well-doing. There are men who are crying out there. There are hope people out there. There are men and women who are lost out there. If you could only continue to be steadfast, unmovable, always abounded in the work of the Lord. Look for every opportunity, whether you're waiting for a taxi, whether you are in the supermarket, whether you are by the cashier, wherever you are, look for an opportunity to reach out because that person could be looking like they're all bubbly, but that person could be lost. That soul could be going to a Christless eternity. Man cannot, sorry, man can be found just like this coin was found. Man can be found just like this woman herself found a piece of money. Listen, this piece of money didn't turn up by accident, nor did some neighbor step in and find it. The Spirit of God himself searches out sinners, searches out those who are lost, finds those who are in despair, and then he uses you, the body of Christ, the church of God, to be an instrument of their recovery. You know how many people, they are out there waiting for you, body of Christ, waiting for you, church, to reach out a hand to them, to reach out a prayer to them, to reach out a word of consolation and encouragement. That's what the Holy Spirit does, like the candle for the woman, just like the candle acted, the, the Holy Spirit lights up the place so that you can see the, the lost coin, so that you can see the souls that are out there, that are dying and going to a Christless eternity and he would use us to bring recovery to the souls of men. Mark chapter 16 verse 15 says, go ye into all the world and preach this gospel to every creature. Hear what the woman did. She found the coin. She found the coin in the dust, in the dirt, in the rubble. She found the coin. She was able to find it. Let me tell you something, it doesn't matter what you're messed up in right now. It doesn't matter if you're deep into drug addiction right now. It doesn't matter if you're deep into wickedness and you're deep into prostitution or you're, you're deep into some criminal activity or you're deep into witchcraft tonight. It doesn't matter where you are tonight or how far you think you've gone. This woman was able to sweep away the rubble, sweep away the dust. I want to tell you something. That's what the Holy Spirit does. The Holy Spirit will light it up. The Holy Spirit will clean it up. The Holy Spirit will bring you to a place where you yourself can begin to see that there is a God who has pursued you. There is a God who loves you so much that he pursues you in your rubble. He pursues you in your filth. He pursues you in your chaos because he loves you so much. When the woman found a coin, hear what she did. She calls her friends and neighbors to share her joy. And hear what the scripture says, when God pursues you, and you respond to him. When God brings hope and you respond to the hope. When God brings recovery and you respond to the recovery. Hear what the word of God says in Luke chapter 15 verse 10. Likewise I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels over one sinner that repented. The piece of silver could do nothing to save itself. The piece of silver could do nothing to tell the owner, this woman, that listen, here I am. I am under this rubbish. I am under this filth. Here I am. Uh, uh, the, the coin could do nothing to save itself. Likewise, men are saved by grace alone. Hear what the book of Ephesians said. 
Ephesians chapter 2 verses 8 to 9. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. The coin could not save itself. Likewise, you and I cannot save ourselves, but grace alone. And grace is a real hell of a thing. There is no way I understand grace, that God would go to the pits of hell for you and for me, that it doesn't matter what I've done, uh, that he takes our sins uh, and he throws it into the sea of forgetfulness. Uh, it doesn't matter how far I have drifted from the presence of God, from the face of God. It doesn't matter what I've done uh, that is so wrong, uh, that is so hurtful to God, uh, but because of grace. You see, it's nothing that I can do for him to pursue me. Grace causes him to pursue me. I do not deserve it. I cannot earn it. That's why it's called grace. I cannot work for it. No man can boast and say, and say I saved myself, but because of the grace of God. I want to encourage you today. Like that coin was lost, and this woman lit a candle. She swept the floor. And she searched diligently. And when she found the coin, she kept a Thanksgiving party with the neighbors and the friends, rejoicing in the fact that the coin that was lost was not now found. Likewise, there was a young man. We refer to him as the prodigal son. He got all, he told his father, I want all my living, all, all my inheritance, give it to me. And he left his father's household. The word of God says he drifted away from the household. He left, he went, he spent all his inheritance in riotous living. Until one day he ended up in a place where he had to tend to sheep, to, to, to pigs, sorry. And while he was tending to the pigs, he was eating the pigs' food. And he began to catch himself and say to himself, what am I doing here? The servants in my father's house they fear better than me. Hear what? I will get up this day. I will go to my father. I will ask God to forgive me of my sins. And I will ask my father to forgive me of what I have done. It is better I do that than stay where I am. And the word of God says that while he was yet afar off, the father saw him coming. The father told the household of those his servants, he said, go and kill the fatted calf. He said, bring me a robe. Bring me a ring. He put the ring on his son's hand. He put a robe around him. He began to call a feast together. He said, my son who was lost is now found and who was dead now live. I want to tell you just as that prodigal son, just as that coin, just as the one sheep who drifted into the pit and was lost, just as all that Christ came for and pursued, he will pursue after you today. Won't you give him a chance in your life today? Won't you accept him into your life today? Won't you receive that hope and that gift of salvation? Won't you turn from where you are today? And maybe you have drifted. Maybe you are not saved. Maybe you have never accepted Christ. Maybe you are in a dark place. Maybe you are in despair. Won't you accept that today? That there is hope in Christ. In a hopeless situation, there is hope. And those who are lost will be found and those who are dead will live let me pray with us this evening father i come before you in the name of your son jesus that name that is above every other name and worthy to be praised father just as the parable of the lost coin just as it was lost it was sought and it was found it is just so with us god that as we were born lost, we were born into sin. That Father, just as we were lost, you have sought us out. You have found us and you have given us hope and assurance in an eternity with you. Father, I bring those who are hearing my voice today and who have heard the word and who are praying today. I pray for those who want to accept you as their personal savior, that as they pray and say, Lord, forgive me of my sins, make me one of your children. I pray, God, that you, as you said in your word, that you will forgive of sins and you will make them one of your children, Father. For those who have drifted, for those who are in darkness, Father, I pray, God, as they come to you right now, that you will forgive because that's who you are. You are 
seeking after us. You are pursuing us, God. I pray, God, that hope will come to a hopeless situation. And for those who are lost, they will be found today. Father, thank you so much for your word. Thank you so much for seeking us out. Thank you so much for pursuing us today. Thank you for your blood today. Thank you for salvation today, God. Thank you for not giving up on us, God. For while we were yet sinners and in the rubble and in the dirt and in the slum and in chaos, yet you sought us out diligently until you found us, God. You continue to search until we were found. So, Father, thank you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. And as I close today, thank you so much for being with us. And I want to say thank you all to the TRC family and everyone else who have been praying on behalf of Pastor and I and the children, our household for Josh. Thank you so much. We have received your prayer. We have received your meals. We have received your love. And we are so much in gratitude and so much in appreciation of your love and your care. I know that oracles, you all have been praying for us. And, and I know how much time you all spent in prayer thank you so much we covet the prayers we need it and we thank you so much for it and may God Almighty who sought us out and found us may he continue to cause his face to shine upon you may he bless and keep you and may he keep you until one day he splits the eastern skies and he takes us up to be with him amen and amen <music>